and that shouldn't be like that. That's a leaky, leaky joint. That's liquid nitrogen coming out of there. Cool. So this is a 200 odd litre liquid nitrogen chiller, who is now empty. And that's the pressure line. Um, normally it would come out here, but. Uh, if you can open that one and you get almost no pressure, this thing's almost empty. So I'm going to fill it. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do, got all this one handed, which is a bit tricky. Should get this boy off. Take that. And what you'll have in the middle here is some giant stalky thing. Obviously, that goes all the way down to the bottom, where you're going to have liquid nitrogen down the hole somewhere. Get rid of this boy, put him somewhere safe. Uh, right, and I'm going to get rid of my O-ring, uh, and now, uh, this thing, when it's uh, warm, uh, the nitrogen goes into the bottom and it'll sort of instantly boil, and it'll spray all the way up here, um, then when it gets really cold it'll start sinking down to the floor again. So you need an extraction fan, or a fairly well ventilated place. This is actually fairly well ventilated. So I've got the fan going down there. Uh, this is where the fairly high pressure nitrogen is going to go in. So... this web there. Beautiful. Back of it, perfect. Right, so nitrogen pressure on. This thing all frees up fantastically. So initially, this is just good. It, it's going to have to cool down all of this. Now the one thing you'll be a bit careful with with nitrogen is uh, if you breathe nitrogen, uh, yeah, you've got no real detectors in your blood that tell you you're low on oxygen. So a decent nitrogen blanket, uh, if you start breathing it, you just black out and seeing as what you'll find happens here, once this all gets cold, is this goes up and it sinks down very quickly. The, the classic way to kill yourself with one of these is you do it in a fairly small room and you sit down whilst it's filling and the nitrogen just sort of comes up and you sort of feel a bit dizzy for a bit and then you black out and, and that's it. Um, you, you asphyxiate because there's just not enough oxygen in the air. So you'll see once it starts getting really cold, it'll it'll come up by jet pressure essentially, and then it'll fall down to the ground where the extraction funnel get it. Uh, and it's been quite impressive when it's really going. Um, I'm going to cryogenic glove here, which might be useful at some point. So the usual thing is, if you don't want to die while doing this, is you take a breath out here somewhere, where you are absolutely guaranteed there is enough oxygen, and you hold your breath and you come in, you do all your work here, because you know when you're holding your breath, when you've got to breathe again, when you've got to get away to where there's lots of oxygen. Because the thing that drives your breathing is the amount of carbon dioxide in your blood, which of course doesn't doesn't build up if you're breathing nitrogen, because you're breathing out the carbon dioxide all the time. So you hear it's starting to uh, kick in now, and it's all getting really cold there. So we're just about to cool all this down. And it, that thing takes, uh, I forget what it is, 100, 200 litres or something. Which is, this sort of your own body weight in liquid nitrogen. And it'll take, ooh, 10 minutes or something to fill up. And then when it does get all full, uh, this will all be frozen like a block. And when that happens, I'll let it defrost for a bit and I'll show you how you put it all back together again. And that shouldn't be like that. That's a leaky, leaky joint. That's liquid nitrogen coming out of there. That's, that's liquid nitrogen. Okay. 
Okay, we're getting there now. So, most of what you're actually looking at here is water in the air. And it sort of bellows out along the ground, which does actually, on a nice humid day, gives you a very good indication of where the nitrogen is. On a humid day, you'll see it absolutely coating the floor in here, which is why getting near the ground, near one of these things when it's filling, is really bad news. But you also see oscillating air. That's the liquid sluicing around in there. Um, which you can sort of stop by locking it down on the wheels, but it really doesn't make any difference. So at that point, we're basically done. You see it all spread out of the top. So it's full, and just close off the valve. And that's it. He's now got about 200 litres of liquid nitrogen in there. That's liquid nitrogen. Dropping over that. Let's uh, close it all down and right. And obviously, putting it back together again. You, I'm gonna let that all warm up to room temperature because I don't like the ice getting in into the joints. But for the moment, I'm just gonna tag it all back together, which means an O-ring. And this has got some moisture on it. I'm gonna wipe all that off. In you go. Alright, so that's just uh, boiling a bit of nitrogen as it cools down all of the bits that are stuck in. And uh, yeah, it's almost, almost there. So this is just basically a miniature version of that. That, that goes to the huge tanks outside. You can just about see the uh, where the main storage tanks are. So, yeah, we get a little bit of pressure from this valve. Um, that's what you've got to open if you want to vent the chamber uh, so you take the top off. If you try and open this while you've still got a bar of pressure in there, this thing will shoot off like um, very impressionable. It'll probably kill you actually if you've got your head in the way of it. Um, so you, you vent the pressure. When there's no pressure, it's like this, you just take it apart safely. And that is how you fill one of these big liquid nitrogen things.